Now we had one more place left after here, which is over the mountains, going to the Khajabaddin. And this is the main Masood headquarter, and the place that Masood was assassinated. By 2001, Masood had become a prime target for the Taliban and for Al-Qaeda, which was already planning the attacks on the United States. They needed Masood out of the way first, and by September, an elaborate plot began to unfold. The final station in Masood's remarkable life was to be here, in this room. There were these two fake journalists, TV crew, very suspicious. For three weeks, the phony reporters pushed repeatedly for access to Masood, who finally agreed to sit for an interview on September 9, 2001, two days before Al-Qaeda's 9-11 attacks. The journalists, they start preparing their cameras, and first thing Masood told to his friend was, why they take so long to prepare their cameras? They don't seem to be very professional. One of the cameramen is standing over there, another one near the door. The cameraman has a built battery. A very strong explosion, and the white, very strong white lights came out, and everybody just fell down. The suit fell down. The fire catch all over. First they thought that it was a bombardment, but then they realized that the explosions happened inside the room. And his bodyguard arrived to him, and the suit told him. Let me stand up. Help me to stand up. Masood's life was cut short. Yet his soldiers fought on. Backed by American special forces, they routed the Taliban in the months following September 11th. Masood had laid the ground for Afghan peace before becoming its modern martyr on behalf of the people he fought for. I just want to come here the last moment to remember who he was and what he fought for. A peace warrior. A peace warrior. That's what he was. 